lot to cover from yesterday's election. Joining us again here in our studio is Dr. Brian Anderson from MUW. Good morning, Dr. Anderson. Good morning. Well, Dr. Anderson, uh, something we hadn't touched on yet this morning with you is uh, a, a rematch between Sidney Hyde-Smith and Mike Espy for U.S. Senate. Uh, give us your thoughts on that race. Right. Uh, the vote tally has not been made official, but the last margin I saw was a 14-point uh, victory for Cindy Hyde-Smith, and that's double the margin from 2018. Uh, this election really seemed to be about affirming support for Hyde-Smith, but also President Trump at the same time, because she didn't campaign much because she felt like she didn't need to, but mainly what she did was show her durable and unwavering support for the president. And one issue we've seen a little less focus on that was on the Mississippi ballot is that ballot measure two. Do you want to explain what that is and why it was important to be on there? Right. And I think voters might have seen this on the ballot and not wondered why or wondered why it was there. Um, Mississippi was unique in having a, a two part formula for electing our elected or electing our statewide officials, governor, attorney general, people we voted for last year at this time. Uh, you need a majority of votes statewide, but you also need the most votes in a majority of House districts. Um, the last time this was relevant in 1999 uh, with the Musgrove-Parker uh, governor's race. Uh, so what we voted on yesterday was to remove that provision requiring the House district uh, you know, vote spread. So now it's just simple, like every other state, if you want to be governor or attorney general, any other statewide position, just need to win a majority of votes statewide. And another initiative that was a little bit confusing uh, for folks on the uh, Mississippi ballot was about medical marijuana. Can you explain to folks uh, what that vote meant uh, yesterday? Well, this was amazing uh, because there was that competing measure, 65A, and everybody thought, well, it will split the vote and we'll get nothing. Uh, very much like the 4242A uh, competition a few years ago on the ballot, all about uh, funding public education. But this time, uh, the, the voice seems to be loud and clear that Mississippians want uh, you know, private dispensaries to come into the state to be regulated by the Department of Health to offer medical marijuana as an option uh, for patients with one or more of 22 qualifying conditions. And with the presidential election, are you feeling brave enough to give us an estimate on when you think we might know? And if, if not, maybe tell us a little bit about what has been done so far through the night and going forward, what still needs to be done before we know. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel comfortable <laughs> predicting, especially since uh, the states uh, have their own way of running their elections and they need to be given time to follow through on the procedures that they have designed for themselves. Uh, so it'll probably be at least a couple days and uh, we just have to be very patient. And uh, Wisconsin, for example, one of the swing states, uh, now just a couple of tenths of a percentage point are separating uh, the two candidates. Are there any other uh, states across the country whose results have surprised you or that it is as close as it is? Uh, well, Arizona is one that's surprising a lot of people that uh, Joe Biden is doing so well there and seems to have um, an advantage. Uh, so we'll be watching that along with Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is, you know, uh, Philly and Pittsburgh on either side, which are typically Democratic strongholds, but a lot of Republicans in the rural center part of the state. And so it seems to be a microcosm of, of the way politics is now in this country. The metropolitan areas tend toward uh, the Democratic Party and, and the small towns in the rural areas are uh, very, very Republican. And as somebody who obviously follows politics very closely in previous elections, how did you feel about yesterday's turnout? Oh, the turnout was fantastic. I think uh, one estimate I saw is somewhere around 66 or 67 percent. Uh, and this is with a pandemic going on. Of course, it was enabled by uh, uh, mail-in and early voting options, which many, many Americans took advantage of. Um, this state, of course, restricted. We don't have early voting and we, we don't have no excuse uh, uh, absentee balloting, but still nationwide, it was uh, an affirmation of people's interest in taking part in the political process, and it was very good to see, and that's why it's even more important we need to let the process play out to its fullest. Patience is key.
All right, Dr. Anderson, thanks so much for taking the time. We're going to check back with you in, in just a little bit.